What I hear most often is that Logsy clicks for people who don't overthink it. Ramsey's Out is a content creator and Logseek's community manager. I've invited him to rate Logseek on 10 key factors and share how beginners, experts, and everyone in between can use Logseek as a second brain. Let's talk about search. Logseek has a search bar where you can just put in search terms for both the pages where it appears, but also the individual blocks. So you will even see the individual paragraphs that match. There are ways to make search even more powerful, simple queries that are basically built in filters. Simple queries work based on links and tags. You can say, I want to see all the blocks that have link A, B, and C, but but not have link D. So you can become very specific. For people familiar with Boolean search, basically queries are Boolean search. And then there is advanced data script. For people familiar with data script, you can use data script in, in Logseek. That obviously requires quite some knowledge. On a scale of one to 10, what would you rate Logseek's search feature? It's very difficult because I'm biased <laughs> as I work for Logseek, but I would give us a seven. It's very powerful. So if you are a power user, the Logseek search would probably be a nine or maybe even a 10. But for the average user, we really need to make that search bar itself much better. I'm just going to be honest here, where I think fuzzy search or even maybe synonyms uh, will be in the search engine. And that is actually something we are working on. Next, let's talk about reusability. When you write a note and you want to make a copy of that note or you want to have it be somewhere else. This is really one of the areas where Logseek shines. As it's a block-based outliner, you basically enter a note once and then you can keep reusing it and linking to it. Not just blocks, you can embed entire branches of blocks, so collections of blocks or pages. And then every time you use it, you can and see at the source block or at the source page where it was used. So that is the, the power of bi-directional linking. What would you put Logseek's performance when it comes to reusing knowledge? Still a little bit self-critical, but here I would give us an eight. Now let's talk about access. Say you have all these wonderful notes, all these things you've learned. Can you access those from different devices? Can you access them when you're offline? What is your relationship to that information? Our main focus really is to give every user ownership over their data. All the data, is only stored on your device. When you download Logseek, start it up, you have to actually select a folder on your file system, be it on your mobile device or on your desktop, where your notes will live. You can use Logseek on multiple devices if you have sync service set up. There are quite some users who use third-party sync services like iCloud, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive. For some people, this creates a little bit of uneasiness because not everyone trusts third-party sync services. So that's actually one of the reasons we're currently building an encrypted sync service ourselves. That will basically keep all of your notes, but also all files that you upload encrypted in the cloud. What about pricing? What does it cost to have your second brain in, in Logseek? It's free. It's open source. We want people to experiment with the tool. We want people who don't have the ability to pay for a tool like this to still be able to use it. So how would you boil all of that, all those three or four or five factors we discussed into a rating. So I would give us a seven in this regard. In terms of multi-device service, I think we can still do a lot of things to improve it. How does Logseek approach sharing and along with that collaboration? Now it's no longer really about personal knowledge management. It's more about team or even company knowledge management. In that sense, Logseek performs really well because under the hood, everything is just stored as plain text files. I can share something with you by just going to the file location, dragging that file into an email or a file sharing application and then send it to you. That is the simplest way. From the app, you can also just click a page, maybe a bunch of paragraphs or bullets, share it as plain text but I can also export it as HTML. Apart from that, there are also a few plugins ranging from having the ability to export to PDF or to Word files directly, even release it on the internet. There is now a plugin that allows you to push your notes as a blog article. Like a publishing service. Exactly. This works with Yugo, it's a site builder. From the plugin, you can just push a note to the web and then a minute later, it will be on your own blog. How about your, your team? You said you have a shared graph. 
off. What, yes. is the, what does that look like? So now it's a little bit unwieldy. We use GitHub. And when I say GitHub for the more programmer types, that will feel very familiar, like, great, I have Git uh, for non-technical users like me. <laughs> I need to have GitHub desktop. So whenever I open our collaborative graph, I need to pull in all the notes. And then when I write and I basically log off for that session, I need to push my notes to the web, to our private repository of notes. In the near future, it will be possible to type in LogSeq and halfway around the world, someone working on the same page will see immediately what you're writing, basically what Google Docs Amazing. provide. What would you say your overall rating is? I would give us an eight. I think one's real-time collaboration is live. I've already seen it. I would maybe give it a nine and a half. It's still not Google Docs, obviously, but it's very close. Let's talk about how easy LogSeq is to use. Am I gonna go in and have to learn all these new skills or can I just start writing or just make simple edits to what I've written? How would you evaluate uh, LogSeq on that? Very high. So if you know what an outline is, there's no need to learn anything except for you type and you press return and you create a new block and you know how to use a tab key to create a child block or indent bullet. That is all you need to know to really get started. If you want to mark up your notes, you can just add markdown immediately. But what is not, markdown? It's about a handful of special characters that you would need to learn. It's very easy. You would learn it within five minutes. Obviously we have shortcuts, so you can use control or command B and it will add the markdown for you. Very cool. So what would you give LogSeq when it comes to ease of use? I would give it a nine. When it comes to formatting, when it comes to more sophisticated ways of structuring your notes outside of pages there obviously there's a little bit of a learning curve I think we can add some features to make that easier let's talk about what I call upgrading I think a knowledge management system you want to use over years you want to use for a long long time what is LogSeq's ability to do everything from adding new features how does it perform as your collection of knowledge grows what is the long-term picture of LogSeq look like that is one of the crucial points because you trust the tool with your thoughts, with your knowledge, and you're calling it your second brain, right? When it comes to not just upgrading the tool, but also upgrading your use yes. of the tool, it's a very natural progression. So you start just with that single bullet on the journals page, you discover indentation, then over time you discover linking and tags, the queries, so the safe search, task management. Just with the core app, you can already do a lot. Then there's also the plugin marketplace. All plugins are open source. What you already see is people taking a plugin and then molding it to their own workflow. We have an API that is expanding very quickly. Obviously, that is for very technical users. You can fetch data from outside your graph, but you can also send data to the web if you want to other tools. One example is the Yugo Site Builder. You can push your notes, which are just an outline, and then make a really nice logging blog post just with a single press of the button. So how would you summarize all that in a one to 10 rating? I would give us a nine. I wanna ask you now about the ability to move basically the ability to transfer. You know, are you locked in? If not, how easy and frictionless is it to get your data, move it elsewhere? Data ownership is really one of our core principles. That shows in every file or every note that you create being stored on your local device in a plain text format. You can just move to another tool, take all your data with you. You can open your LogSeq notes with thousands of tools that are on the market, free pay tools. The challenge arises when you are really invested into LogSeq, use the more advanced features like queries, block embeds, page embeds, that we have our own way of doing. Yes, you can use your notes in other tools, but if you have a block reference, for example, so you have referenced a paragraph on another page, you will not see the actual content. You will see a hash or you see the, the ID of that paragraph. So how would you summarize that in a one to 10 rating for LogSeq? I would give us an eight because there are a lot of ways to get your notes out, but I deduct two points because we want to look for some ways to have other tools show LogSeq data just the way as it was intended. Let's talk about connecting, otherwise known as linking, both internally 
internally between different resources in your own knowledge collection, but also external linking. Let's start with internal linking. In Logseq, it doesn't matter where the data is because you can always link to it. Link to an individual paragraph block or to a branch of blocks or just to a page. And then whenever you create a link, it will create two links. So one to the target and then from the target to the source. But I think the interaction with other tools is just as important. If all of your notes and all the links are only working within that one app, that is obviously not as useful if you have a stack of tools. But we have released functionality that enables you to create a link to a specific page or a branch or a block. And then you can click that link from maybe an email or another note-taking tool. Or things or things, it's an app link. In your Things mobile app, you can have a link to your Loxygraph and then it will open in yes. the in the iOS app, oh, for example. Oh, so beautiful. That is the way. These are the little details that like, at first you're just like, oh, whatever, that's just some technical thing. But in the long term, yes. those little bits of friction really add up. With Loxseq, you click the link and within one second, you're in your notes. What rating would you give Loxseq on a scale of one to 10? I would give us a nine. Let's talk about capture, how easy and fast it is to capture. Like we've talked a lot about text, but how about video and audio and images and links and embeds and attachments, files? The first entry point is always your journals page. From the community, there are web clippers that are being created, highlighters, web highlighters. As for embedding other content, as long as it's on your file system, you can basically embed anything. So you can embed audio files, video files. We have a built-in PDF reader with highlighting capabilities. We have recently introduced YouTube timestamps. So if you have a YouTube video cool. and it's running, you press a keyboard shortcut and it will create a timestamp that is clickable. So Amazing. you take your note and then when you want to revisit your note, you click the timestamp and the video will start playing there. But that obviously still requires you to open Logseq. So now with our API, we're looking for ways to enable other apps or services to put data into your graph without being able to read from your graph. That is very important. So what would you rate Logseq overall on its capture ability? I would give it a seven right now. Some of the PDF features are not available, for example, on mobile. So if you open a PDF on your mobile phone or on iPad, it will open your PDF editor or reader on the iPad or, or your iPhone. So that is something that I think we should still improve because you can capture a lot of content now using the desktop app, but what use has it if you cannot use it fully on mobile devices. So I think that's where the work is that we still need to do. Let's look at organizing. First of all, what does that look like even in, in Logseq? How do you create structure and, and order within your collection of knowledge? That is the perennial question, I think. People coming to Logseq and asking, where are the, the folders? <laughs> they want to know where are the folders? There are no folders. In Logseq, the atomic piece of information is the paragraph. Mm. A lot of organization happens on that level. Writing on a journal page or any other page, you mostly structure using indentation. So you relate information through indenting paragraphs. Okay. Then you can add links. What makes Logseq different is that you can add a lot of data about your notes. We call them properties. So you can say this page has tags, all the tags you can name after that. So you have a property called author with a value. So you have a set of tags or metadata that is applied to this page or to this collection of blocks. And then you can throw that into a query to actually resurface that information. The whole paradigm of organization has changed. Yeah. It's like, like you said, more granular. Once you can zero in on a paragraph, it's like organization is not just stick to things in a folder which is the only way of associating them. There's all these much more sophisticated, more precise, but also more flexible ways yeah. of saying how things are kind of related to each other. How would you sum all that up on a one to 10 scale? I would give us a nine. Um, where we lack, I think, is the documentation of these features. The features are there, but how to actually use them uh, is another question. We've now covered 10 separate criteria, but there's one left, a bonus factor. Security, it's something that uh, may not be a concern in the beginning, but over time, as you start to put your life, your dreams, your goals, your information, your, your personal details into this thing, I think becomes an increasingly important thing over time. What is Logseek's approach to security? 
We are a privacy first tool that shows in the way how we store the notes on your local file system. The challenge comes once you discover all these cool integrations. We have a big warning when you install plugin that saying, even though this plugin cannot access your file system, it will be able to access your notes. So we want to make the access rights more granular. But the core of the app is local first, is security, is encryption. So I think that we have completely covered. It's just for the, the bells and whistles, for those who want it, we need a little bit of more settings basically to give them. So what would you give LogSeq overall on a scale of one to 10 on security? I would give it a nine. Well, you heard it from the experts. We have a grand total score across 10 different criteria for your second brain app, including the extra credit, the bonus score on security. We have an extra nine points, which adds up to a total ground score of 89 points, which is a pretty fantastic assessment of this amazing new software called LogSeq. If you're trying to decide which note-taking or second brain app is right for you, check out this video right here for an in-depth guide to the four note-taking personalities, which will give you so much guidance on which software is perfect for you.